Sup guys, so Pick a Path will be a new series in terms of Left 4 Dead ideas. Since this month is October, the month of horror stuff, my favorite month of the year, I think is befitting to bring a scary idea to the table. So I'm not going to be the one to present this idea, my buddy Shadows, well 2009 Shadows, oh my god 2009, oh, 7 plus year, oh my god I'm so old. Alright, now this is an idea that I came up with, that maybe a crescendo event, maybe a little thing going on there, that when you come to a certain point in the chapter, that there is going to be a certain path you must take, left or right, or up or down, or whatever. Now you're going to have to pick a path. Maybe the path on the left is going to be nah, a narrow tunnels. Similar to the sewers in Left 4 Dead 1, but not, but more tighter than that. And there's going to be a tank somewhere inside those tunnels. It's going to be a pain to kill the tank because the tunnels are so narrow and you don't have enough time, you don't have enough room to, you know, juke him and get out of the way. So that's going to be a pain. However, maybe the path on the right is the one that has common infected everywhere and a couple of witches walking around or maybe sitting in the middle of the path where you can't, when you don't have a choice. Both of them are narrow, both of them are extremely dangerous. And every time you play through this chapter, it will never be the same. Maybe the tank one will be on the right, maybe it'll be on the left. It will always change every single time you take a chapter. And none of them will be easy. It all depends on, this is surely depending on luck. Now, me and Roker thought of another idea that, you know, in the middle of the night, so we were in the little fear kind of mood. Now, this one is that there's a little event where you have to you're in a certain building, maybe not in it, but Outside. there's going to be a switch where you must turn it off. It's like because there was a, de a guard inside that was freaking out and he hit the emergency shutdown and it shut down all doors, inside and out. Now, before you go inside the building, there's going to be the you know emergency release, which will turn off all power in the area. Now, outside, there's going to be a little more light, while inside, it's going to be total darkness. You can't see your hand in front of your face darkness. Yeah, it's like one of those um, optional routes that you can go inside or outside. You can go in the, in the building or around the building, and it's different. Outside the building, there's going to be tons of, tons of board of zombies. And there's like a lot of car alarms and stuff. That you have to set off. Like, they'll be in your way and you have no choice but to jump out the car and get over and alert the horde toward your location. And... There's not really much ammo piles and stuff. So, alright, Shadows, you explain about the inside of the building. Now, the inside one is the one that I made up because I was in the creepy mood. Now, inside what's gonna happen is, it, like I said, in complete and total darkness. Now, What's gonna happen is inside it's gonna be an intricate kind of maze thing going on. Not like a not like a maze maze, but nonetheless it's not gonna be easy to find your way through. And on top of that, the only source of light that you have is your flashlight. Now, as we all know, if you reload at the wrong time or maybe try to punt a zombie away, it you'll be left in total darkness and you won't be able to see. Now, inside the house or the building, it's not going to be very, there aren't going to be many zombies in there. There's going to be the few wandering infected around. However, the thing about this is, while you're in total darkness, there are going to be three to four witches inside, walking around and some are sitting still. And they might be in your way, or they might not be. Nonetheless, it is that you have to get past these witches to get to the other side to open the door. Now. While this is happening, you never know. The witches are going to spawn randomly across the building. Inside, I mean, across inside the building, and two are going to be walking, and two are going to be stationary. Now, the thing is that if you turn a corner and the walking witch is heading towards your way, you run to the right, maybe to make a right, and there's the sitting witch. The, the whole this is all very fear-based kind of crescendo event because now you're stuck in between two witches and your allies. What can they do? Because you know they're gonna be probably shading their pants just as much as you are. Yeah. So. However, we... as we all know, that the witch hates flashlights. So when you see a walking witch, what do you have to do? You must turn off your flashlight uh, because you don't want her to get pissed off. When you do that, is when it gets scary. 
because the only thing you see is a faint red glow from the witch. And absolutely, besides that, absolutely nothing. You can't, you can't feel around the walls because you don't know which way you're going. And it's going to be very, very... Scary. Piss your pants. Scary. So I hope you like the pick a path idea and shadows idea. So I'm going to elaborate on both ideas and add some improvements upon some areas. Alright, so before I delve into that, I would like to say that I think Valve was considering a dynamic path system. Uh, they kind of have that in Left 4 Dead 2, but it's completely watered down and really minimal. I think in the Left 4 Dead 2 commentary, they said that the playtesters found multiple paths to be too confusing. Also, there were probably several more factors that were in play, such as it was time consuming, a lot more labor, it consumed a lot more memory. Imagine the processing and the loading time if they had implemented dynamic paths. Jesus Christ. Alright, so back to the pick a path idea. Really simple, there's path A and there's path B. We're hoping for balance, so both paths will have the same level of difficulty. Players need to weigh out the pros and cons for each path and really contemplate about their next decision. Both paths will provide a challenge in their own way. One path isn't easier than the other path, well depending on the player. You just have to pick what path you're more comfortable with. So do you guys love Shadow's idea? I was completely mesmerized by his little scary idea. However, even though I loved it, it isn't perfect. So starting with the story behind the events, just scrap it completely. You just have to make a simple and critical decision. Either go inside the building or around the building. Path A, inside the building completely enshrouded in darkness. That might be a little too much. Add some flickering and pulsing lights. That will be more balanced and be quite helpful to the survivors in some parts. Also, it will enhance and accentuate the horror aspect of that area. The flickering lights will make it out to be like you're in a horror movie, especially if a witch is underneath one of the flickering lights. Speaking of the witch, there's a major error in this idea. There can't be a wandering witch and a sitting witch at the same time. Perhaps make an exception in this case. Like on that day, for unknown reasons, there can be a wandering witch and a sinning witch at the same time. If that's not possible, then we're just gonna have to go with four sinning witches, which is okay because they're a lot more dangerous than the wandering witch. So path B will be like a parking lot with some cars with their alarms still set on. So it's kind of like an optional crescendo event. Ultimately, path A is the more horror-esque path and path B is the typical Left 4 Dead path that we're all so accustomed to. So what path would you choose? Horror or action? Uh -oh.